we're going to be talking about the slopes and y-intercepts of these parallel and perpendicular lines. So let's start with the parallel lines. Um, there are two lines here. We're looking for their slopes. So what you want to do is find a point where it crosses through at an exact number. So there are a couple different choices here. Um, for line one, the first thing I noticed is this point right here. It crosses exactly through at the point negative three, zero. And then I see two more points. We actually only need two, this point here and this point here. So uh, let's use the point zero, two. So you could use that third point. Um, as long as you have two solid points, that's all you really need. So now uh, for the slope, I have two choices. I can either count rise over run, um, which I think would be my preference, or I can um, use the slope formula if I have the coordinates of the points. So I think the easier of the two options is to count rise over run. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> I'm going to take, um, I'm going to start at my lower point, And first you want to count how far up or down you're going. So from this point, we're going up until we get even with the um, second point. And then we're going to go to the right so that we end up at that point. So then what we're going to do is count how many boxes we went up. So we went up two boxes and we went to the right three boxes. So that means that the slope of line one is two over three. Um, all right, so now we're going to do the same thing with line two. So again, I need to find some points where it crosses through exactly. So I see one right here. And then I see another one right here. And again, you could find the coordinates and use the slope formula. Um, but you don't have to. You can just count rise over run. So I'm going to do that now. So from this point, I'm going up two and to the right three. So I'm going to label that up two, right three. So my slope is also two thirds. So you'll notice that when I have parallel lines, and this happens all the time, parallel lines will always have the same slopes. The y-intercepts, um, what we're doing is looking at where these lines cross the y-axis. So our answer needs to be an ordered pair. If you look here uh, for line one, it crosses right here at this point, which we actually used for our slope. So the y-intercept of line one is zero, two. And then for line two, it's uh, zero, negative one. And it was another point that we used to find our slope. Perpendicular lines are not going to have the same slope. So let's take a look at their slopes. Um, and we're going to do the exact same thing where we're going to find the points. And then we'll count rise over run. So let's start with line one. It looks like this point all the way up at the top goes through exactly. And then this point right here. So now we're going to count rise over run. So if I go up till I get even with my point, it looks like I'm going up four. And then if I go to the left to get to my point, I went left one. And when you go left, that's a negative direction, so it's going to be negative one. So my rise over run would be four over negative one, which we would just write as negative four. For line two, I need to find my points again. So it looks like this point here and this point here. So now I'm going to count rise over run. So I'm going to start at my um, the lowest point. So it looks like I'm going up one. And I'm going to the right four. So my rise over run would be one over four. So slope of line one is negative four. Slope of line two is one over four. And we're going to talk a little bit about that on the next slide, but these are called opposite reciprocals because they're opposite signs. And if you took the fraction and flipped it upside down, it would equal the other one. So I'm going to write that up here that uh, they have opposite reciprocal slopes. And then lastly, we have to find y intercept and that's the same as what we did for the parallel lines. We're just looking to see where it crosses the y-axis. So line one crosses the y-axis at this point right here that I'm making green. And that's the point zero, one. And then line two crosses here at zero, negative two. We talked on the previous slide about parallel and perpendicular lines. So let's talk about their definitions. 
The definition of a parallel line is uh, there are lines that never cross. The symbol that we use for parallel is two lines. Um, it looks like an 11, but it's um, the symbol for parallel lines. Um, and two lines are parallel if they have the same slope. And we saw that on the previous slide when those two lines both had the slope of two thirds. Perpendicular lines are lines that cross at a 90 degree angle. So a 90 degree angle or a right angle. The symbol that you'll see used for perpendicular looks like an upside down T. And two lines are perpendicular if they have um, slopes that are opposite reciprocals. So again, opposite is talking about opposite signs. So if one is positive, the other one has to be negative. And then reciprocals is talking about um, a fraction. If you flip it upside down, that's the reciprocal. So um, if one of your fractions is 1 over 2, then the reciprocal of that would be 2 over 1. There are two different scenarios you might have um, if you're asked to decide if lines are parallel and perpendicular. So if you're given the equations of the line, what you want to do is look at um, the equations in slope-intercept form and that is y equals mx plus b. In, or if they're not in slope-intercept form uh, and, you, and you need to rewrite them, one thing that you can try to remember is that you need to solve for y. If you solve for y, you are essentially putting it into slope-intercept form. After they're both in slope-intercept form, you're comparing where the m is, which is the slope. If you're given two points, you want to use the slope formula for each set of points. And just to refresh your memory, the slope formula looks like this. You don't need to rewrite the whole equation because in order to determine if two lines are parallel and perpendicular, all you need is the slope. We're going to state whether the following pairs of lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So before we get started, I just want to refresh your memory. Uh, parallel lines have equal slopes. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. And then if it's neither of those two things, then the, they're neither parallel or perpendicular. Um, so what we have to do in order to compare these are to put these all into slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And essentially all we're going to do is solve everything for y. Once we get y on its own, um, it will pretty much be in slope-intercept form. So here we go. Let's try um, this first one here. Um, so y is already, um, it's not by itself. It's, it's on the left side with another term. But there's no number in front of y, so this shouldn't be too bad. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract 4x from both sides. So that cancels out. And I have my y. Now it's by itself. Now, normally you would write 5 minus 4x, but I want, my, um, I want it to be in slope-intercept form. So I want my x term to be first. So I'm going to write negative 4x, and then the 5 is positive, so we would write plus 5. So the slope for this problem is the number that's in front of x, the coefficient, and the slope here is negative 4. So now I'm going to do the same thing with uh, the second equation. We're going to solve it for y, and then we'll compare the slopes. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract the x term. So I'm going to minus 3x on both sides. I have 12y, and then I have negative 3x minus 6. So again, I'm putting the x term first. Now we have to do another step because y has a coefficient of 12. So I'm going to divide every term by 12. I know sometimes you just divide by 12 once on both sides, but I want my two terms to be separate, so I'm going to uh, divide them separately. So now I have y by itself. Negative 3 over 12 reduces to negative 1 fourth. So you could write negative 1 fourth x. And then uh, minus 1 half, because 6 over 12 reduces to 1 half. All right, so um, now I can see that my slope is negative 1 fourth. 
So when I compare these two slopes, it looks like maybe they're perpendicular, but if you notice that they are both negative numbers, that means they're not opposites. So they are reciprocals, but they're not opposites. So we would say that these two lines are neither parallel or perpendicular. For example two, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna solve for y here. This time I'm gonna add two x to both sides. So I would end up with seven y equals two x plus 14, since 14 is positive. And now I have to divide everything by seven. And again, I'm gonna do it to all of my terms instead of doing it once on the right side. So I have y equals 2 sevenths x plus 2, because 14 divided by 7 is 2. So then for this first equation, my slope is 2 over 7. All right, next equation. Um, you'll notice that it does not have a constant term. So um, what I'm going to do first, because I always want y on the left side, without really doing any work, what I can do is flip-flop my two um, my two terms. So now I have 14y equals 4x. And now if I want uh, y by itself, all I have to do is divide by 14. And I only have to do it once on the right side since I don't have a second term. It's kind of like having a plus zero, but you don't have to write it. Okay, 4 over 14, I can divide both of those by 2. And I would end up with 2 sevenths x. And then again, if you wanted to write plus zero, it's not wrong. You just don't need it there. So now I can see that my slope here is two sevenths. So now when I go to compare my two slopes, I see that they are exactly the same. So that means that these two lines are parallel. We're trying to decide here if these two, if the, the lines that go through each set of points are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Uh, and the way that we're going to explain our answer is by showing our work to find the slopes. So we're going to use the slope formula. And as a reminder, the slope formula looks like this. y2 minus y1 equals x, or over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to have to do the slope formula twice. Once for this first set of points, and then once for the second set of points. So I'm going to do the ones that I circled in blue first. I'm going to label them x1 y1, x2, y2. And now I'm going to plug my numbers in and simplify. So y2 is negative 1 minus y1, which is negative 2. So I have two negatives here. It's actually going to turn into um, a positive. And then I have x2 minus x1. So negative 3 minus negative 2 is actually negative 3 plus 2, or negative 1. And then 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And when you simplify that, you end up with positive 1. And then for the 1 in green, I'm going to label my points. x1, y1, x2, y2. So my slope would be negative 4 minus negative 3. So again, you need both negatives. And then x2 minus x1. So when I simplify here, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1 and 3 minus 2 is positive 1. So my answer here is actually negative 1. Now, this one is not, it, it's not obvious when you first look at it, but these are actually perpendicular lines. And let me show you um, why. So if I look at this, this step right here for the green one, and then I'm actually going to write another step over here. Um, these negatives cancel each other out. So it's really like I have um, 1 over 1. So let me circle that. Okay, when you compare these two, they are actually opposite reciprocals because um, this is going to be weird, but 1 over 1, if you flip it, is still 1 over 1, and they are opposite signs. So um, it's a little bit tricky. It's not as obvious as having something like um, 2 thirds and negative 3 over 2. Those are also opposite reciprocals, and, and those are more obvious. But here, these are actually opposite reciprocals, so these are perpendicular lines. We're trying to figure out which two lines are parallel, so we're going to go through and solve everything for y, and it will allow us to compare their slopes. So for part a, if I want y by itself, I need to divide by 4. And all I really care about is this term right here, because this is my x term, the number in front of that will give me my slope. So I see that the number in front is negative 2 over 4, 
if I reduce it, it turns into negative 1 half. So that's my slope for part A. For part B, again, I'm going to divide by 4 for all three terms. And I'm focused on the x term. Uh, 2 over 4 reduces to 1 half. Okay. And then part C, I need to divide by 2 now. And again, I'm looking at my x term. So you'll notice I'm not always looking at the first term. Um, which is what slope-intercept form really looks like, because slope-intercept form is mx plus b. So usually the x term is first, but I'm always focused on the x term no matter where it is. All right, so here's my x term. It looks weird, like you might think that the slope is 2, but there's actually an invisible 1 here. This is actually 1 half. So I'm looking for two uh, parallel lines, which means I'm looking for the same slope. And the two, ones, the two lines that have the same slopes are B and C. So B and C are my parallel lines here. On a map, Sandusky Street passes through coordinates negative 2, negative 1, and negative 4, 8. Pennsylvania Avenue passes through coordinates 4, 11, and 6, 2. Describe how these streets intersect and explain how you know. So what they're asking us to do is determine if these lines are parallel, in which case they will never intersect. If they are perpendicular, which means they intersect at a right angle or a 90 degree angle, or if they're neither. So that means that they, they intersect, but um, not at a 90 degree angle. So we're going to do the same exact thing we did on the previous slide, where we're going to find the slope, uh, not the previous slide, but a few slides ago. Um, we're going to find the slope between each of these sets of points, and then we'll be able to compare our answers and get and come up with what they're asking. So let's start with Sandusky Street. So I have two points, negative 2, negative 1, and negative 4, 8. So I'm going to label my points x1, y1, x2, y2. I'm going to write in this upper left-hand corner uh, the slope formula. Sorry, not that one. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And now I'm going to plug in my points. So I have, um, let's see, 8 minus negative 1 over negative 4 minus negative 2. So this actually is 8 plus 1, or 9. And this is negative 4 plus 2, or negative 2. Um, and this negative, what I like to do is just bring it out to the front so that it's not really with either number. So it's negative 9 over 2. That's our answer for Sandusky Street. Now I need to do the same thing with... Um, Pennsylvania Avenue. Okay, so my two points are 4, 11 and 6, 2. So I'm going to label x1, y1, x2, y2, and I'm going to plug them into the slope formula. So I would have 2 minus 11 over 6 minus 4. 2 minus 11 is negative 9, and 6 minus 4 is positive 2. And again, I'm just going to put that negative out in front. So that's our answer, negative 9 over 2. So if you look at our two slopes, you'll notice that they are equal. Same slopes here, negative 9 over 2. So that means that these two lines are parallel. Now the question actually asked us how the streets intersect. If you have parallel lines, they will never intersect. So the answer to this question is that these streets will not intersect. And the way that we know is because they have the same slopes, meaning they are parallel lines. Okay? Last question. This is exactly the same as the previous uh, problem. We're going to take these two um, streets. We're going to take the coordinates, find the slope, and then we'll be able to compare them to see if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So we're going to start with Washington Street. Our two points are 4, negative 10, and 2, negative 12. So I'm going to label x1, y1, x2, y2. Uh, just a reminder, slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm just going to plug in my numbers now. So I have negative 12 minus negative 10 over 2 minus 4. Negative 12 plus 10 is negative 2, 
and then uh, 2 minus 4 is also negative 2. So my answer here is actually 1. Adams Street, my points are negative 5, 7, and negative 6, 8. So I'm going to label my points. And now I'm going to plug everything in. So I have 8 minus 7 over negative 6 minus negative 5. So I get 1 over negative 1, so negative 1. Um, now these, this is another one of those things. Um, we looked at almost this exact same situation a few slides ago. Even though they don't look like opposite reciprocals, they really are. Um, they are obviously opposites. One is positive, one is negative. Um, and the reciprocal part is weird because it's the same number. So this really, if I had reduced it, would be 1 over 1, and this is 1 over negative 1. So if you look at these two things, 1 over 1 and 1 over negative 1, they are reciprocals. It's just that because it's the same number, it looks the same. So these two lines are perpendicular, which means that these two streets intersect at a right angle. So the streets intersect at a right angle or you could say at 90 degrees um, and the way that we know our explanation is because the slopes are opposite reciprocals which means they're perpendicular lines